timer. As we said, we are in this together. We are family. So I, we're going to just uh, call you off just to share what you what you put in there. And um, let's go ahead and scroll to the front because I want you guys to share. This is what you all wrote when you heard of the term royalty. And let's see. All right. So, Sajana, what did you have when you heard the ro term royalty? I put king and um, established. Good. Let's see. Sister Jerice, you put Mulan. And I put Mulan. <laughs> I, I put that. Mulan. Look, look, I need to explain that because I was watching the movie Mulan and um, I was always trying to get this whole idea of royalty because we don't live in a monarchy. Right. And the thing is, at the end of the movie, she had to meet with the king in front of a bunch of people and she bowed so so low. Mm -hmm. I mean, she was just, her face was down and I'm going, that's, yeah, that's an image I need to keep in my head. That's good. Right. That's good. Sister Kimberly, go ahead and share what you put in there about uh, what popped in your head when you thought about royalty. When I thought uh, royalty, I thought um, a lot of things. I don't even, I was typing so fast, but immediately the color purple comes to mind. Um, high-ranking uh, priesthood um, and um, authority. Beautiful. Beautiful. Let's see. I want to make sure we get everybody a chance to uh, put this to Ebony. What did you put in there? I put air. Air. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that speaks to relationship, which is, I, I feel like, if it's air, it speaks to relationship. That's one of us. Sister Trina, what you put in there? What did you put in the chat? I put in their kingdom because royalty rules kingdoms. Yeah, you can't you can't be a king without without a kingdom. <laughs> yeah. yep. Without a kingdom, you just playing games. You just playing That's right. <laughs> Brother Celine, what did you put? I put in their priesthood as along the lines of that delegated authority that you know was given from the from the uh the Lord. So that's why I put that in there. Yes, love it. So the Washingtons, I know they said Washingtons, talk about that color again and what you put in there. <laughs> Outside well, of the movie, third. not the color purple, the movie, they're putting the color as in. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, we first put the uh, kingdom kingdom and the blood, you know, that's the first thing that came to mind, but purple too for royalty. Mm -hmm. That was the first thing that came to our mind. Awesome. Yep, that blood is important. I want to make sure we didn't miss anyone. Um, Sister Nina, did we have you share what you put in there? Yes, I put king. Can you hear me? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Yeah, I put king because I thought about what um, David. I thought about David. And when you think about royalty, he was like one of the first kings uh, other than Saul. Saul was a king that failed, but David was the king that was chosen. So to me, that would made it royalty for him. For anyone that's in royalty, it would begin with David. Awesome. Big example set there, too, because uh, a man after God's own uh -huh. heart, and yeah. whether we're talking about the pattern of God's heart or the pursuit of God's heart, mm -hmm. go wrong with either one. And I think that's a, that's a really good example. Prophetess, what did you put in the chat? I put honor. And the reason why I thought of honor is because when you think of royalty, you think of a status mm. um, and that they have more like a place of respect or honor um, in a different society. Absolutely. And you yes. may not be able to approach them in just any type of fashion, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, that's huge. And Sister Jocelyn, I want to make sure. Oh, what did you what did you type in the chat, Sister Jocelyn? You could share because that was good as well. I put um ruler, rule over all. You're in charge of everything. You know what I mean? Yes. Absolutely. That is a, a perfect segue because as we as we said, we're gonna look at um the monarchy, that system versus the system that we live in, which is a democratic system, right? Yeah. And in a democratic system, it's, it's a, of the people, by, by the, the people. people. For the people, <laughs> period. Period. Right. 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 And, and depending on who you're talking to, that word "people" might be exclusive of of other people and only include certain people. So it is definitely a departure from what 
God is talking about in his kingdom. Go ahead, exactly. So like we were saying, we live in a, a democracy. A democracy is a form of government in which the people have the authority. So I think it's very important for us to kind of digest this. Um, so here's our question. How is this different from Jesus' millennial kingdom described in the book of Revelation? How is the demo demo democracy, excuse me, different from the monarchy, right? Different from the way that God's millennial kingdom is described in the book of Revelation. And we're going to go and look at some of the, the clips from Apostle as well, but we just want to see how do you think like that is different? And we don't have to put this in the chat. This one is going to be an open discussion. Think about the, the, the differences there. I feel like... Um... You guys talked about the the, the monarchy is going to be Jesus ruling with that iron rod and only what he says goes, not like in the democracy where the people say what go what goes. <laughs> exactly, that's right, Sister Sharon. And I, I think sometimes that could be the reason why we struggle to follow God's word because at the end of the yep. day, it's it's not a democracy. It doesn't matter how we feel. What we have to say, what we think about it, his word is final. So beautiful. Sister Jana? I think about the difference of it being undivided, like the kingdom is not divided. In this, in our democracy we live in, everybody can have an opinion about everything. And so we're not like one. It's Republicans or Libertarians or Democrats or they don't have a party or it's so different and it's so divided it's not but under a kingdom it's one ruler it's one thing it's what he says and that's it it's final right not up for debate <laughs> and, and so what you're saying man and we're seeing this in real time a house divided can't stand mm -hmm. yep and i think you know whether we're talking about democracy or whether we're talking about our own households you know or our own families when we have Division, two different visions of what's going on, that house will not be able to stand because it's not unified. It's not, it's no solidarity. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's the, it creates stability and allows us to move in stride and in sequence for what God has for us. Sister Jerry? Oh, yeah. go ahead. If I may add, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yes. I'm, if I may add to it, when I think about those two terms, monarchy and democ democracy, um, with the monarchy, the options there will be no more options. There will you, you, there are no options. It is what he said. It is every knee will bow, every tongue will confess. You will follow the rule of the Almighty King. No more options. Right now we have options with the democracy. There is a division. <clears throat> but monarchy, all that goes away. Beautiful. No, and I, I think you bring up a huge point in that because Jesus has the perfect way. I think in a lot of times we get um, we get things somewhat misconstrued or we may see it differently because options are great. Options are also opportunities for us to get it wrong. <laughs> so that's a, that, chance. that can be that can be <laughs> something that we have to be very careful of. But Jesus being a perfect lawgiver, we wouldn't have to worry about that. Sister Jerice and then the Washington. Well, I kind of think too that it goes. Um, it's not just a rule. It's not just a kingdom that he's going to be ruling. He's not going to just be king. But he's also going to be the chief priest. This is a, this is a priesthood. I, I was thinking what Apostle said the other day about Melchizedek. He was both priest and a king, mm -hmm. and those. So it's a rulership, but it's a different kind of. That's I. That's yeah. That's a different kind of rulership. Yeah, and, and where we have the separation of church and state. Notice how he's able to bring all that together. And, and think of the, and, and I think, you know, even as I'm thinking about it and I'm packaging it now, that has so many broad ramifications because we can think back through the years and decades and school is the first place that comes to mind where we have, we have stripped things out of school mm -hmm. and now it's become something other than what many of us have desired for school to be. And so now thinking to a, ta a place and a time where he is both king and priest, and now government and spiritual leadership are one. Oh my God! Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go ahead, Washington family. 
Okay, it had me thinking back to the story of Darius when he was the king and he um and and the the wise men were jealous of Daniel and their relationship and he couldn't go back on his word because so he was trying to figure out a way not to throw him in the lion's den. And when you have that rulership and you have that ruler and he sets the law, it is the law. He can't even go back on it. Mm-hmm. So, like that. That's one of the things I think about. Now I wanted to add, add something to that. Um, I had once heard uh, Dr. Miles Monroe say uh, one of the reasons why the mass majority of Americans can't grasp this uh, was because of the two systems. We don't live in a kingdom or uh, that minority mm-hmm. system, so it's harder to understand God's system because he has a kingdom, you know, mm-hmm. and we don't live, we have a democracy. So that's one of the things I thought of when we started talking about this. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think you hit a spot on. Yeah, that's spot on. Mm-hmm. I think Sister Nancy and you guys and some others have hit, hit the nail on the head. When you think of uh, the millennial reign, and as opposed to how life is ran now, there is no other way, but not even just that, there's a purity in his ruling, in his rulership, in the millennial reign, because now there are some places that that live, that go by monarchy. But we also know that they rule with an iron fist, they rule um by the god of this world which is satan they you know their father is not our heavenly father so they have a different viewpoint and a different stance and it's definitely a monarchy what they say goes but it's ruled in evil and greed and um you know everything that is ungodly under the sun so when i think of the millennial reign think about a complete, complete ruling, a just ruling, mm. a pure ruling, you know, that we'll all be able to live by. And that's what I think of when I think about the two, the difference in the two. And it's funny that um, you said that, Prophet, because it it may even be hard for us to comprehend a pure ruling. Yeah. You know, um, the closest that we have, and it's, and it's far, it's not even close, the example that we're bringing for the monarchy versus the, you know, democracy, but that's not even close. It just established more so of a, a final ruling versus the people's a voice. System. Yeah. A system. Yeah. So yeah, that is going to be powerful and amazing and beautiful. And just to think that we're, we're engrafted in that, but we'll talk about that a little later too, which is and amazing. To you guys' <laughs> point, all those Kings, all those rulers, all those kingdoms subject to bias subject to unfair ruling, subject to greed. Like what Prophetess was talking about, how many kingdoms have been driven by the dollar? Yeah, Where it wasn't pleasing God, but it was to consolidate power and consolidate finances mm-hmm. and, and make one group of people subservient and make another group of people this. Mm-hmm. And now you got the oligarchy. I mean, it's just so many different pieces when we think about human monarchy versus the divine monarchy. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, Brother Slim. Yeah, I was also thinking about the, the uh, when we were talking about uh, the king of being king of kings. And, uh, you know, when we when we got to fill that position, you know, we got to get ready now, you know, to, you know, when we, you know, get our, our crowns and uh, are placed in charge and we got to, we, we're, we're getting in position now. So when we fill this, this shoes, you know, it, it won't be foreign. So, yeah. Yeah, let's say stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, that that's powerful because we can't wait until it's time. You, you might miss out if you're waiting until it's time, you know, so now is the time. So thank you for adding that. That was that was a really good thing to think about. So watch as soon as you all had your hands up and um, go ahead and share. No, I was just going to say um, a prophet is we're talking about uh, the people that have the kingdom system in play, they typically are evil people for uh, a short way to say it. But I was thinking like that 
that is how it works um, on this world. But what if that was our system and we had the right person in play, you know, the right person that believed um, was a believer, you know, and believed in Jesus. But we had that same uh, monarchy system. Like it would be a, a beautiful place, you know, it would be a better world. But I, I still believe we probably be always be under attack because of that. Because the majority of people wouldn't like our way, but that would be a beautiful thing, I think. I think that they would do us, they would do him like they did Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yep. You took the thought out of my head, brother Slim. Israel had a theocracy. Eventually, they wanted to go from a theocracy to a king because they they just wanted to have somebody in front of them be like other nations. And before long, um, law had to be instituted. Different things had to be set in place. They started sacrificing all the more and had to bring about a savior. So with all that being said, yes, the, the necessity for Jesus is undeniable. Sister Jerees. Yeah, and that's actually, this is a question um, because I, I was thinking about that this week where uh, I was also looking at, uh, listening to Exodus and, uh, and, and no, Leviticus, Exodus and Leviticus do this and you got to do it a certain way. And there were all these laws and rules and that was God governing those people. But then I thought about, you know, there were so many rules and people kept breaking them. And then Christ came and he basically said, you got two rules, love God and love one another and treat other people better than you treat yourself. You know, and, and I don't know what that, I don't know what that looks like. I don't know what that kingdom would look like. That's all I'm saying. That's my question. What would it look like? I think the book of Revelation gives us the best example. Um, when we when we start to read through those pages and chapters and get an understanding of one, it won't be energy dependent, right? Like yeah. there won't be any oil wars or, you know, fight for commodities and things that we know to govern our day-to-day -day life. Like when we throw all that out, start with the blank slate of Jesus setting everything in order and taking it, we're talking about the restoration back to the beginning. Like our frame of reference can't comprehend mm -hmm. because we've been so saturated in day in and day out living that we really have to, God has to sanctify us first and mm -hmm. foremost. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and, and we have to ask him for an, a holy imagination that when we read his scriptures, Lord, help me to see, help me to understand. Lord, make this plain for what it'll look like because all of our reference points are, are tied to this are world. Tied to this world. Mm -hmm. And so until he gives us something over and beyond that, that we then focus on, because the Bible does talk about set our affections on what? On things that are above mm -hmm. and not things that are below. Because why? Those things that are below are going to be subject to corruption. Mm -hmm. They're going to be subject to decay. And I think that that might be a really good word to describe everything that we've known in human existence. It has an expiration date. Eventually, it's going to decay. Even yeah. to uh, add to what he's saying, even the fact I know Apostle has talked about this too, that this world is is fake. What we're seeing now is not even, you know, you know the real. So what we're even comparing it to, it doesn't even qualify to be compared to. So when you think about it that way, you're just like, wow, you know, um, one piece. Eyes haven't seen. Yeah, whoo, come on, ears <laughs> haven't heard, you know. <laughs> the piece that really blows my mind and I, that I kind of stay stuck on is how we won't need electricity. <laughs> we won't need electricity, right? You know, God will, will light up. We won't even need it. I can't even think about it. I can't even comprehend what that would even be like. A future with no light switches. Man. Lord help. Man, you know, so... Yes, we, we want to go ahead and, and show a clip, and this should help to help you to kind of think about how you want to answer this next question. It feels and, like a Tesla. Sorry, before we... <laughs> I'm just playing. Oh. <laughs> it's a puzzle, I'm it's playing. It's a puzzle, someone that feels like a Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> okay, not quite. It's, it's, a little, it's a lot better than that. <laughs> it's got to be the autonomous Tesla, though, right? <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Susan. As we prepare this next clip, um, in this clip, if you were on on Thursday, it may jog some memories here, but he is talking about or, or giving the example of how the monarchy prepare the next coming king, so or the next person in power. So go ahead and watch this, and we're going to go from there. 
Charles, he's king now. But when his mother was queen, he was declared that he would be the king way before she was even probably even in office as the queen. They declare it. He was Prince Charles, but he was the king. He had not yet been crowned and coronated. Oh man, this is good. He was, he's already made that. And during that time while he was waiting for his mom to pass, he was given counselors and instructors, counselors that came along and taught him how to walk, taught him how to drink. When you drink, you don't just be like, yeah, yeah. No, 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 you are, you're gonna, you're a king. You must sip the water a specific way with a certain hand that if somebody greets you, you can greet them with the right hand. All of these forks mean something differently. When you walk, we're gonna put books on your head to make you walk straight. When you get out of line as a young man, he's a little kid, but he's still a king. They already know. One day we're gonna have to bow before this man, but right now we're in charge. Psh, hit his hand, stand up straight, walk straight, till it becomes so second nature that one day he just walks regally. He sits properly. This is the same thing with you. You have already, according to the scripture, been made. He has made you a king and a priest. So what he did is he gave you the Holy Spirit who is called your counselor. Oh, you, I hope y'all getting it. And the Holy Spirit has been trying to train you and I on how to walk, how to sit, how to eat. You, you are a king. Kings don't smoke. Kings don't get drunk. Not the kings in the kingdom of God. You must walk. Kings are espoused to their queen. We are a specific type of creature, and the Holy Spirit has been transforming us for the day that Jesus cracks the sky. We, we can really yeah, call yeah, it a yeah, section yeah, right yeah, there, yeah, but yeah, yeah. we want to dive into this because... <laughs> I think Apostle, shout out to Apostle. Oh, music at me like, man, I'm making sure I the next thing. What, Go ahead. I think Apostle really just set the table through that video yes. for, for so many things to be unpacked. So our question to the group is. But before we even go to the question, how many of y'all want to throw something at the screen? When he when we were talking about this on 2 oh oh Thursday, I was like, oh my God. Oh, because here's the thing, and I'm let him go into it. Is uh, and again, y'all don't have to be on mute. You know, talk back to us. We're not streaming or anything. But but I was like, oh my gosh, it's amazing when God reveals these things to us. Um, because you know, you, we I've heard you know that the Holy Ghost is your counselor. You know, He's supposed. But I'm just my mind was just like, wow, w wow, wow. Um, so go ahead and ask the question. I just want to say that because. It puts everything into perspective. Yes. You know, so. So what is the role of the Holy Spirit and what is his level of significance in our preparation for the millennial kingdom? What is the role of the Holy Spirit? Mm -hmm. Yep. And what is the level of his significance mm -hmm. in our preparation for the millennial kingdom? kingdom? Go ahead, Sister Jenna. I'll start on the role of the Holy Spirit I, as a counselor, but he talked about how this these people were instructors, like teachers, like you have a, a, a coach or a teacher to teach you how to work out. You have a math teacher or an English teacher to teach you the fundamentals of one plus one is two, number bonds, and you have English teachers who teach you all of these fundamental things. That's what I think of. When I think about the Holy Spirit, he is my teacher. He is teaching me the fundamental things of how I'm going to rule in his in the kingdom to come. How to talk, how to walk, what I have to say, what I can't say. Those things. The fundamentals, right? The important. Ooh. It puts a whole new context on the fruit of the spirit, right? When we start to think about Galatians 5, fruit of the spirit, the works of the flesh, things that should not be in our character, in, in what we do every day versus having love, joy, peace, gentleness, meekness, self-control. All these items now carry on a whole nother level because the Holy Spirit is our counselor getting us ready for kingship. Go ahead, sweetie. And then, and then too, counterculture. You know, you always hear that, oh, you know, God's trying to take stuff away from you. Why can I not do? Why should I? No, no, that's the total wrong mindset. You know, God is trying to get something to you. The Holy Spirit is preparing you for something better. Like it's, it's amazing when you think about it 
in the right context and what the Holy Spirit has come to do and how he's come to prepare us. So, All right, we'll have Sister Trina, the Washingtons, and Brother Chris. Yeah, I see. I see the Holy Spirit as one that leads and guides us and then admonishes us. Okay, just like uh, uh, when Apostle was saying, those instructors that was uh, grooming the future king, the Holy Spirit is grooming us, okay, showing us the right way to go, okay, and where not to go. And our job is to listen to the Holy Spirit. Now, when we don't listen, okay, he can give us a smack on the hand too. Uh, not literally, but you know what I'm saying? He, he he can admonish us. So that's the way I see the role of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And, and you and Sister Kim are on the same page because she yeah. was talking about grooming is what comes to mind. Royal preparation. Absolutely. The Washingtons, y'all go ahead. Yeah, so it was basically what Sister Trina said. And I was looking at it from Apostles. Um, standpoint of the raising and grooming of the prince or princess with whoever is going to take over but also it's to be it's to be it, the holy spirit is to get us ready for that place without the light switches right he, he <laughs> prepping us and grooming us to go there uh to be uh ready and in, in the presence of the lord how he's how he want to us to be there, how he wants to allow us in, the only way he's going to allow us in. So a teacher, a counselor, all of those good things. Oh, that's beautiful. And it makes me think too, you know, the Holy Ghost is our counselor. He's there to prepare us. We cannot be prepared without his Holy Spirit. Yeah. And it puts a significance on the importance of having that. Just as the, 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 the child, right, that's born into royalty, have those things already prepared for them yeah. to help them, right? Yeah. If we're in him, we we need the Holy Spirit to get us ready. Without the Holy Spirit, we are, we're lost. So it just puts another level of significance on us having the, the Holy Spirit I living think in us. one of the words you might be looking for is intentionality. Mm. He was intentional about our development. He was intentional about our maturation. Um, that we might be mature and lacking nothing, right? Mm -hmm. Like patience have its perfect work. So I think these all start to come into focus as we realize, and maybe it's us releasing a peasant mentality mm -hmm. and receiving the fact that we are princes and princesses, that we are kings and queens, not in our own right and authority, right. but through the power that Jesus did on the cross and the power of his blood. And we want to make that crystal clear too, because we're saying we are, we are able to come into this kingdom. We're able to be born again and into this kingdom through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the work that Jesus Christ did on the cross. So that is the caveat. You don't want to get it twisted because nowadays people think, oh, we're kings and queens by our own might. And it is not anything in our own might, anything in our own power. It is through the work that he did on the cross. So Brother Chris and then Dr. V. Hey Amen. Well, the second part of your question, as far as the uh, the significance of the Holy Spirit, um, as we draw closer to the kingdom, as, uh, as we go through the time of trouble, right, before the kingdom, um, you know, comes, uh, and is the millennial rain clumps where we're talking about is Jesus told us that uh, the Holy Spirit would be when the comforter comes, he's going to teach us all things. Yeah. Right. Yes. And then yes. he says he's going to bring all things into remembrance whatsoever I've said unto you. Right. So he's going to keep us in remembrance of the word of God. And I and and it wasn't until Brother Richard, man, uh, you know, uh, in, in his you know ministry. Uh, uh, of music, he likes to call the Bible our constitution. Right when we're talking about the kingdom, right? And uh, and what it what so how I correlate that is I say the Holy Spirit is the one who helps us maintain our allegiance to the constitution, right? You know, being a military man, we swear a, an oath to the Constitution of the United States of America, right? And and the Holy Spirit being that comforter, bringing everything into remembrance that Jesus taught us that the Father would would have us to do. Uh, and we walk and we live and move by that word and that word alone. So the Holy Spirit is is absolutely critical. That's why Apostle and Prophet is always encouraging us to be filled with the Spirit, right? Mm. This is the most important thing as we try to draw closer to that day is being full of the Spirit so that we can come together. Then all of our 
uh, our time spent together uh, is that much more effective uh, when we're all filled with the spirit and we're walking exactly the direction he wants us to walk. Amen. Good Amen. Points. Amen. Good points. Um, Dr. V and then Prophetess. Um, the Holy Spirit, um, it highlights the word of truth and help us to go through the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, for example, I recently learned that um, rejection um, of men is not God saying he's rejecting us is us um, being redirected to go in a different path and the path that we may desire for ourselves may not be the path that the Holy Spirit had for us. So the Holy Spirit leads and guide us in all truth. Yes, ma'am, all truth and righteousness. And, and I think you bring up a huge word in there, guidance, guidance. Man, my dad called it being hard-headed. You know, if you if you hard headed, you're gonna have a soft behind. Fine, That's yeah. what he was gonna do. Yep. <laughs> he told me that a few times. Shout out to Pops. The reality is though, is that if we don't listen to guidance, yes. what we can expect is trouble, yes. is pain. And and some Hardship. of which yes, mm -hmm. is avoidable if we were to listen. That was the other word he would always tell me. Son, listen, listen, active listening, engaged listening, mm -hmm. not letting it pass through one ear and out the other. But man, make it stop between them two ears and slow down and process. And put action behind it. Because some of us can listen and then don't follow through. Well, that's still disobedience. I'm yes. glad that you heard, but what was the action? What was the follow through? That's it. He that knows to do good and do it and not. Yeah, yeah. To him, it is sin. It is sin. Prophetess, go ahead. Man, when I think of the Holy Spirit, I think of the big picture. Holy Spirit is God. And I think sometimes we kind of trivialize that a little bit. You know, we say, oh, yeah, the, the Holy Spirit does this and that. No, the Holy Spirit is God. So what, you know, this may be an inside joke, but it's God doing everything and, and uh, covering every basis for us. So here we have the father who says, Nobody can perfectly save them, but only one. So let me put myself in flesh mm -hmm. and, and go down and be the perfect sacrifice for them. But not only that, because Jesus, what Brother Chris was talking about, Jesus said, the Father is going to send one in my name. So not only that, not only do I go and put myself down and let me be that perfect sacrifice for them, but they still going to get it wrong sometimes. Mm -hmm. So let me also send my spirit yes. so that once they believe on me and they still mess up, let me help them guide them along the way and teach them every single step. So I just think of him covering all the bases. You know, when you get something, you buy a new thing and it comes with the complete directions. <laughs> And we still have a hard time reading them directions, don't we? Yes. It even says, go ahead and check and make sure you got every part first before you start, right? Yes. How yes. many people actually do that? And then sometimes when people go ahead and get going and then they say, something don't look right about this. No, it doesn't look right. What do you got to do? You got to completely pull it all apart and then you go back to them instructions. And that's why I see the Lord, the Holy Spirit as is God saying, okay, let me give them every tool possible to be able to make it in a world that is was designed for them, but, be, but became corrupt. Mm. You know? And so that's what I see when I think of the Holy Spirit. That's beautiful. You gave the analogy of the... Uh having those directions and, you know, putting things together and you're like, you didn't follow them. Right. And you see that the outcome is not ideal because you didn't follow the directions and there's two pieces to it. You know, we should take it apart and go back to the directions, you know, but sometimes we get upset and well, well this doesn't work. I'm giving up on this and, you know, leave bad reviews. And it's like, but sis, but brother, you know, you didn't follow the directions, you know? So no, that's, that's powerful. And that's very important. <laughs> or we choose to live in dysfunction. Yeah. We, <laughs> we make our bed in dysfunction and that's, 
all too common. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and to build on what Shay is saying and what Prophet is saying, sometimes we got to deconstruct to reconstruct. Like, and not have the pride in place and say, you know what? Not only did I get it wrong, I need help. Help me, please. Um, help is a four-letter word, but it carries a lot of weight. Um, so with that being said, we got one more question for you. We'll uh, round the basis. We'll back out of here and we'll save some time for final comments from Apostle and Prophetess. So last question, how has the truth and knowledge of the coming millennial kingdom impacted you? What might be some practical applications? How does this look in our day-to-day -day -day life? We'll read it one more time. How has the truth of knowledge of the coming millennial kingdom impacted you? And give us some practical application. How, how does this look in your day-to-day -day life? Brother Chris. I'll go ahead and kick, kick that off. Um, it's kind of what a, a Apostle addressed in that, in that piece that you guys played was when I first you know, thought about this, uh, and I'm saying to myself, wow, this is uh, you getting a lot of responsibility in that kingdom, right? And and what I know about uh, leadership, right, is it's not something that you just turn on all of a sudden, right? It's not something that just like, all right, you know, one day you're not you're not in charge, and then boom, you're in charge now, and you're doing everything right. You're making all the right judgments. You're making all the right. Uh, uh, you know, having all the right perspectives on these situations and things. No, that's something that you got to build up to over time, right? And you, and there's people pouring into you and and helping you develop your leadership style and things like that. And so uh, that's how that's immediately what I thought about when I understood the responsibility that's coming. Then is, you know, now is the time to be honing those skills, right? If I'm not looking at the situations the right way here now on this earth you know, uh, in, in, in this age, what am I going to be doing in the age to come, right? How am I to be trusted with that much responsibility in the age to come uh, if I'm not faithful over these few things here uh, before he makes me rule over many? Yes, not losing sight, right? Not losing sight, not losing sight and staying focused. And I, I think based on that response you just gave, Brother Chris, we can see all the more why Paul said, in whatever state I'm in, I've learned to be content. Mm -hmm. He knew that this world and the sufferings of this world were not worthy mm -hmm. to be compared mm -hmm. to what was going to be received in the next life. Laid up for me is a crown of glory. Mm -hmm. He knew, man, let me stop. Mm -hmm. Let me stop. Sister Nancy. So um, I wanted to say that um, in knowing, being taught about the millennium, it's reminding me, it's, 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 also preparing me to see things that's happening before the coming it's opening my eyes it's making me very very conscious and cautious of everything that's taking place the 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 foolery of the enemy the tricks of the enemy and it makes me real keen to the unctioning of the holy spirit to remind me that i am set apart I am peculiar because we are royalty and we don't act a certain way. We don't move and think and do things a certain way. And then I see, um, like in our music or in the television shows and in the, 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 the commercials, I see the enemy. My, my eyes are more keen to seeing it because I know what's to come. So it's preparing me. It's sharpening my my senses, my earthly senses, to see what's spiritually happening, if that if that makes sense. No, Sister Nancy, we're hearing you loud and clear. And I, I think the word that I hear in that is awareness. Go ahead, Sister. Oh, I was going to say, um, I was about to jump out my seat, because Sister Nancy, I, I, I as well have had kind of that same revelation with this, because I feel like, you know, this is something that should be shouted on the rooftops. This is literally the best kept secret, but it's not a secret because it's in the word of God, but it, it really is because if we get distracted by the things of this world, if we get focused on the wrong, wrong things, if we have the minds mindset of, you know, um, 
oh my goodness, believing and following God, I can't do X, Y, and Z. That that is a total misnomer. You know, it's we we act this way because of who we are and whose we belong to. We act this way because we know that we're in preparation to rule with him in the millennial kingdom. We act this way because he sent his only begotten son to shed his blood on the Christ on the cross for something we deserve. We act this way because. Because, because, not because we're forced to, not because it's something that the Bible says we can't do, not because it's something that is a, it's because of who we are and how he created us to be. Mm -hmm. So if he keeps the secret of, of how he created us and what he has for us, then it'll be easy for believers to, to not walk in, and fully become who God has called us us to be. So again, I, I just urge us all to kind of share this, to share this, you know, this is, this, this is, you know, his promise and, and, and who he's called us to be. I, I can't, I keep saying that because it's huge. Yeah. It's huge. You know, it's huge. So brother Washington or and brother and sister Washington, you guys have your hands raised. Go ahead and share. Okay. So we are talking about royalty. So, and like we we're saying, like, it's hard to to picture, uh, for and especially for me, like I've had to have God help me with that. Like help me see yeah. what you see in me, you know. And 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 so the Holy Spirit has been doing that, and just in my daily lifestyle, it's like, no, I'm 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 the lender, I'm not the borrower, I'm the head and not the tail. You know, my father is heir, and I mean, my father is king, and I'm heir to yeah. to his what he has placed on this earth, what, what he's bringing it back to, you know, we were supposed to rule and, and the things of this earth were supposed to be in subjection to us. Mm -hmm. And we lost that. And mm -hmm. then we, we were brought up in a system that we don't see that, right. you know, we don't, we don't see it. So it's, it's, I've been asking him, I've been asking the Holy spirit to help me, help me see that in my daily life but now we we walk in that walk in purpose walk in power you know um whereas before before learning that I, I wasn't doing any of that mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> oh that's huge and that's what, that's what I was saying in the sense of um, the practical applications because yes. if you don't know who you are and even in, even when we do okay yes we know we're son, we know we're kings, not excuse me, sons and daughters of the Lord. Yes, we know that we know, but even still, if we don't kind of be conscious about it, and God shows us like your real position of who you are, it's easy, you know, to fall into those things. But you're like, no, you know, the king and the king of a of a, the, excuse me, the daughter of a king. There's some things they're not going to do. There are some things that that's just a no no. It's, it's places just, you won't see them in. Right. It's things that they won't say. <laughs> things that that won't come out of their mouth because of their position. And who they are. So, and to build on what Sister Nancy has said and what uh, Sister Erica has said, I believe that one of the principal things that the enemy tries to utilize with the world mm -hmm. systems is that he's trying to diminish our expectations. He's oh, trying wow. to strip us of our expectations so that we don't expect anything. Because faith is 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 the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. Mm -hmm. If he can diminish our expectations. Ooh to where we won't even embrace faith anymore to believe that there is something bigger, better, greater beyond where we are, what we see and what we have going on, because um, yeah. faith goes beyond our senses. Mm -hmm. It goes beyond what we see with our eyes. Um, if he can get us to diminish our expectations, he can set us on a path that is really, really bad. And as Dr. V put in here and I, and again, I, I need to get some some so I can throw. I, I'm I'm animated, you guys. I get excited. <laughs> so I'm about the Lord of God. She said, um, wait, go back. Here we go. She said, we no longer walk around having an identity crisis. We know who we are yeah. and who we are. And this is the crazy thing. The devil know who we are. Yeah, he yeah, knows he knows. who we are. He knows. And so he tries to confuse us. So, man, like she said, you know, we know who we are and who we belong to. And, and there's no longer an identity crisis. So, Sister Jana, go ahead and share. And then we will get ready to wrap it on up. <laughs> well, I was thinking, like, this is just a moment of transparency. As apostle and prophetess have been teaching us about decreeing and declaring. And I did it out of obedience, but I didn't really like grasp what they were saying until right now, that the king has the ability 
to decree and declare oh, come on, come on. <laughs> the king has the ability to decree and declare a thing so me being a part of his kingdom i have the ability to decree and declare a thing i don't know who i am i can declare or declare what he said if i don't know what to do that's why the the the, the prince that's being raised up has a counselor and he studies kings and queens that have come before him what in certain situations this is what they did this is what they decreed this is what they declare the bible gives us example after example of people who decreed and declare what the lord what the king said and how their lives changed and were transformed so i get it amen it took me a little minute <laughs> but I get it. and it it can change my day-to-day -day living if i wake up and the holy spirit gives me what to decree and declare over my day over my kids over my job over whatever i have the ability to decree and declare a thing because the king said i could i apostle and prophet i appreciate y'all yeah. i appreciate y'all oh that just blessed me so that's what i got Man. the ability that i have to decree and declare some things about who he says I am and what he says I can have and what he says I can do, I can decree and I can declare that. So that's how I'm pra I'm going to practice it every day in my day-to-day -day life. And I appreciate you sharing. And this is reason too, I know, you know, on these Sunday and Thursday, and you know, especially Sunday or the sessions where it's created for us to jump in and share, you know, if you would have never gave that revelation that you just connected the two, you never know um, how it touches and reveals that for somebody else as well, because you're absolutely right. You know, it, it just made a connection, which is powerful. Um, yeah, man, I, perfect, perfect place to to wrap it up on. So thank you for allowing the Lord to have you, you know, for you walking on that and sharing that. And um, just as a wrap up, before we yield it over, because we're going to yield it over to our leaders, we're just going to kind of quickly say, you know, today we explored Jesus' millennial reign through the arc. arc archetype of the monarch system, monarch system. That's what we kind of looked at to explore it. And then we also deepen our understanding on the importance of being born again, because you can't come into the royalty. It's, 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 it, they don't give it to anybody. You gotta be, you gotta come into the family. So you gotta be born again. And the role the Holy Ghost has as our counselor. So as we're yielding the floor over, we want you to, this is going to be another chat, a chat, yep, please drop, in the, drop chat. in the chat, get ready. And you don't have to share. We'll read it to each other. You don't have to share, but get ready to drop in the chat. And we want you to summarize this session or what, what we have been learning about the millennial kingdom. So either this session or the session on Thursday, only using three words, three words to describe this session and Thursday session um, that you've learned and go ahead and do it now as we yield the floor over to That's apostle right. and prophetess. Amen. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Can we give God a praise for that? We can't hear you, Apostle. Well, awesome, awesome, awesome. I'm saying it again because nobody can hear me. Amen. Uh, uh, can we give God a praise for that? I'm going to bring up Prophetess, and we'll just end it right there. Would you have something, Prophetess? Go ahead, sweetie. No, I was just going to say you guys did a phenomenal job, and I think the whole purpose um, to show us what the millennial uh, reign um, is, gives us, how do I say it? It bring, gives us an expectancy. It should give us an expectancy of things to come. Not only that, but to not focus on the things that we see in the world now. It is so easy to get caught up on right. life. right. Can I get a witness with that? It's easy to get caught up on life. It's easy to get caught up on circumstances um, and things going on around us. But when we think of a kingdom that is not of this world, right? Right, right. That's here now, but it's going to come and be made perfect. It's going to be perfect. We can't even understand how perfect what perfect looks like to be honest because we've been born and living in a world of sin even though we serve a perfect god so that's you know one thing that i always like to think of don't focus on this because this is temporary but the millennial reign that's coming 
is going to be something that is set up and established for eternity. I know it's a millennial reign, right? It has a time frame to it, but it is an eternal, um, pure reign that we can't even understand. Amen. We can't even understand. Apostle, you have something else? Yeah, I just wanted to say this was awesome, 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 awesome. And I think what it's it's highlighting is it's it not only lets allows you all to grow in your in your own way because you're probably already growing whether you know it or not, but sometimes you can see your growth as you're doing it. Like, oh, I didn't even know I knew that. I just said it and didn't even know I. <laughs> or you could have known it, but then when you say it out loud, you're like, er, Eureka. That's something totally different, right? So the gentleman been doing declarations month after month and said, oh, because I'm a, I'm a queen in the kingdom of God. Okay, I get it now. I get it. So that's why we're doing it. And then that takes you to another level. You got to have, you look, you got to be able to skin the cat more than one way. You got to be able to grow in more than one way. If you're just growing, if your growth is dependent upon uh, someone's mouth only, then that is bad because the one one other person that has that same trait is a newborn baby. They're waiting to they need their mother to feed them. That's all that is it. And that's what we have in the church today. We have a bunch of believers. As soon as something crazy happens, oh I see, I knew I tried it and it didn't work. But when you begin to grow in multifaceted ways and learn how to dig into the word for you, like the old folks would say, know how to get a word for yourself, how to know and talk to God for yourself, know how to pray if they shut down every church, if every pastor in the country dies, you'll step up and say, I might not be as good as he or she was, but I got a word in me that I can deliver and God can raise me up. This is what we, we're, we're trying to do. And more importantly, this is what the Lord wants. He wants sufficient Believers that are sufficient and and not self-sufficient, but reliant upon the Holy Spirit of God and upon the word of God and not on people. Amen. We got a lot of people that know everything about the bishop. But when you ask them about the bishop of our souls, uh, that the, they start acting like they don't know <laughs> two from two. But God is growing in you. So we we want you to plug in, plug in. When this time comes, I'm seeing more and more starting to come off the the little uh, the screen being blocked. One of my screens was blocked because I'm recording it to upload it on Facebook for you to go back and review it. When I upload it on Facebook, it ain't to the general Facebook. It's to the Facebook group, the members group, right? We starting to push stuff there and say, okay, there you go. So you can go back and review it. And plug in, amen. And then the growth will go grow exponentially, amen. And I'm believing that. So we're gonna end it there. Uh, great job to the Bulls family and the, mm -hmm. the ministers in training. Y'all been killing it. Y'all mm -hmm. been killing it, man. Mm -hmm. Woo. I was looking, me and the prophet, me and prophet is we might be out of job, <laughs> which is <laughs> which is a good thing. I love that. I love it. Amen. Amen. We'll just switch jobs. We're not quitting until they throw dirt on us. Glory to God. But we can raise up some people and we're excited about what's been going on and all of the inputs. Your inputs are powerful. I'm seeing them on the chat. All of those things. So, Father, we thank you. We love you. We adore you. We thank you for these awesome men and women of God. And, Father, we pray that you would add to it that people would come on and people who don't normally talk would start stepping outside of their comfort zone and begin to see themselves grow, tackling subjects that seem difficult but really aren't. They aren't. You didn't want to put them in your word to hide it from us. You were trying to make it where we can get it. And Father, you've given us the ability to give it. And even when we don't think that we're smart enough to give it, we get it. We thank you for the Holy Ghost that will take that same word that I couldn't understand and break it down into a way where I get it just like that. And we thank you for it because your word says in Daniel that in the last days, the wise will understand, but the unrighteous and the unwise, they will not have a clue. 
We glory that the people that are online today will not be in that latter group, but they will be a part of the wise who will shine as the stars that your, like your word said in Daniel 12, and they will have an understanding. They won't look at the news and be afraid, but they'll look and say, oh, we are one step closer to the returning of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And we give you all glory, honor, and praise. Uh, cover us in your Psalms 91 blessing like you already said, but we want to keep reminding you of your word. In Jesus' name, cover our children and our children's children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.